if that oh, wipe of molybdenum paste to the inside of that. That would have been lubricated originally with graphite grease, which is a good thing. Now the tab drops into a little hole on the arm and I've got to take this tab here and swing it right round and hook it behind there. Which is one of those other jobs that you probably can't see me do because my fingers will be in the way. Let's see if we can get this. This is much easier when the spring is tired and stretched beyond usefulness. Can't quite get this one seated. That's better. Get the end of that spring up and over. There, tucked into place. So now, if I cock this, press the release, the shutter will fire. Which reminds me, there's one area there I need to lubricate. That's on that little arm. I've run some molybdenum paste down the edge of that, so that as the that's cocked, and as this comes round, it runs down there smoothly. That's working very nicely and it needs the speed trains put in next. So I'm going to cock the shutter. Here's the retard gear train. Now the tab at this end of the retard gear train needs to be pulled back so that it drops behind the tab on the uh, blade actuating ring. Not on top of the tab, otherwise when you do the screws up, things will get bent, nothing will run right. So that should be free. The screw at the other end, which was loose when we started, is the adjustment screw. The hole that runs through is oversized in the plate and that allows you to adjust the position of the retard gear train inwards or outwards. Yeah, you can still see just about. And we'll start with it just about all the way in I think. Here we'll do. Tighten those two screws. If I release the shutter, we should get something like one second. That sounded believable. Right, the self timer goes over here. Now there's a screw on the base of the self timer, drops into a hole. In the mechanism plate. If you don't get it in there it won't seat correctly. You know when you've got it right. Yeah that one just fell in. Sometimes they don't. Alright, if I hold back this lever that self timer should run down. Okay, so that's working. Tighten that screw up. Tighten that screw up. 
and a few other bits and pieces to go in yet this little pinion needs to go in now I'm just going to give the shaft of that a light wipe of molybdenum paste when I use that I put virtually nothing on you're just leaving a dirty mark that's all that's required this piece with its return spring I run the molybdenum paste around the inside edge that's where it runs around the lens tube around the outside edge where it operates against various other bits and pieces and that suffices the spring has to hook over this post here no it's often loose on that post and when there's no tension on it it falls off right that's right that's stretched out now getting the timing of this hang let me get the lines across otherwise you see nothing it's the contrast too high okay getting the timing of this right so the first tooth on the pinion should be in the first notch on the curved rack okay that's looking good the shutter speed setting is cam plate here I usually run the molybdenum paste around the center where it runs around the lens tube around these lumps and bumps where it, the cam on the retard gear train runs and round there for good measure that's usually sufficient put this in place on the shutter bring this round to the eighth of a second position and I want to see what sort of result we get If anything that's slightly slow it's what's it like on a 15th oh definitely slow okay we're going to speed the action up by moving the retard gear train outwards for lesser engagement with the main drive cam I'll slacken that screw off just move this out slightly oh that was a lot that was probably too much but we'll see what sort of a result we get put this back in place Pinion's keen to get out of adjustment. Let's get that back where it should be. This cam plate in place. This should be an eighth of a second. What do we get? That sounds believable. About 15. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be willing to believe that somewhere near. I'll put the front retaining ring on lightly and go away and check this on my speed tester and see if we're good to go. What's one second run like? I would say that's possibly a bit fast. Okay, I'm away to test this back lately, back shortly those speeds are very good just check the self timer make sure that runs put that set to a second set the self timer it's running smoothly here we go all right so so far so good 
take off the retainer, lift the cam plate off. This little piece, that can go in place. You occasionally find shutters where this piece is missing. It's because people didn't know what it was. Didn't appear to do anything. They didn't miss it. And the shutter works fine without it, except for that one little thing that it won't do. This blocks the action of the shutter release if the shutter's not cocked. Okay, so that all appears to be good. So that's in place, which is part of your double pre exposure prevention stuff. I'll put that on there. I'll put that front retainer ring loosely in place. And I'll fit the shutter into the outer case. I'll just give this a wipe with molybdenum and paste inside and out. Not as generously as that. Top and bottom edges. That can drop into the groove. And then the curved rack can go in there. And if I cock the shutter, I should be able to present one to the other and get it into position. There we go. That went fairly well. The flash contact I've got to get connected up. Now that doesn't always pull into line very easily. Let's see if we can get this to, to go. No, that's it. It's in place. Three screws hold the outer case in place. These two countersunk or flathead screws, the larger diameter one goes in this position. The smaller diameter one goes in here on that narrow tab. Don't mix them up. Looking at my flash contact, making sure that everything's as it should be. I think it is. Okay, that's all good. Since I'm a I'll test that flash contact while I'm here. So I'll cock the shutter by swinging this across. That's cocked. Find my electronic flash. Here's an electronic flash. Plug that up to the shutter. The lights are on. Let's see if it goes. Oh, I didn't see a thing. Right. Something is not correct. I suspect that contact on the case is not making. Let's have those screws out and have another go at putting that in place.
it looks okay. Just put one screw back there and then test it again. I think I'm. I think this is this. This is the problem. I think, and I think we'll get get it sorted out. Uh, cock the shutter. No, still nothing. Right, some investigations in order. Okay. I had a problem with the flash. We'll see if we can test it. The problem appears to be the electronic flash. Because this one works. Now I can put the front control rings in place, I think. So I'll start by taking off the Retainer ring. This is the coupling that couples the aperture settings to the ring, to the control ring with the, with the numbers. Let's fit that in place. That little tab on there has to hook into the little hook. There's a little fork in here on that thing. It needs to go in there. Otherwise it won't move the aperture. It's seated. Yeah, that looks good. The number ring that telegraphs the number to the top of the shutter where you can read them goes on there. These little notches give us our click stops for the shutter speed. They're normally ridiculously greased with graphite. I've just put a little bit of molybdenum paste there. Now yeah, we seated. No, that ring's popped out of place. Now we appear to be good. Put our retainer ring in place. Check that the click stops are positive, but the action's not too stiff. That sounds good. And I'll put the screw in there that retains that, stops that retainer ring from being able to move. That's it. I next need to clean my lenses, put them back in the shutter and fit the shutter to the camera body. Well with the lenses cleaned and put back on there, I noticed that the front group has a little bit of a rattle to it. It's like the bayonets are not holding it firmly. Now that sort of thing happens if uh, someone's pulled on the lens and effectively these little bayonet tabs here are just bent out slightly from where they should be. What I'll do is I'll just put a bit of extra tension in those so I'll remove the three screws that hold this bayonet to the lens itself. It also could be loose if these three screws had been loose the lens would also rattle about a bit but these 
the screws are not and what I want to do is just bend those tabs out slightly it won't take much Um, and the reason you need I'm doing that is the rattle's a little bit disconcerting but basically what it means is if the, the lens is rattling it means that it's not staying fixed relative to the uh, shutter and so the focus your point of sharp focus would slightly move now at anything other than full aperture and with a close subject you might never notice that right let's try that always line up the red dot with the red dot that's it there's no more rattle there now that's fine and I can put that on the camera body okay let's go with this then so we've got a paper shim and a metal shim now where there's a paper shim I would normally put it against the shutter and the metal shim over the top because then it's much easier to avoid damaging the paper shim while you're fitting the shutter back to the camera. Fit that back into position. I'll crank this out to the close focus position so I can move the curved rack here. I'll lift the shutter up slightly, move that curved rack across. We'll try it there. and see if it'll cock and fire no it didn't quite cock so I need another tooth so I'll bring it forward again lift the shutter forward slightly move that curve rack forward one tooth drop it back into engagement try again almost one more tooth you should be able to hear the shutter cocking action dropping in as just before it reaches the end of the film advance stroke yep that was it now we're good yep shutter's working fine so I can hold that in place open the back of the camera drop the retaining ring in place and if I can nudge that into position and I should have the spanner here somewhere it can't have gone far, we only had it earlier, there it is Got in the retaining ring. That sounds good to me. Let's get it on a nice slow speed. That's good. Half a second and self timer. Yeah, that's running down smoothly. That sounds good to me. Alright, I'm pleased with that. 
So, let's get rid of my fingerprint here. Check that everything else is good. That looks, oh that back catch is a bit bumpy isn't it? Let's just have a quick look at that. Take a touch of molybdenum and paste and just put it on that hook there. Oh yes, that's a bit better. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. So that's the Retina 3C. It's ready to go back across the ditch to Australia. Everything's working nicely now. I haven't checked the meter for accuracy. It's, I'd say with a 3C it's probably a 50-50 mix if it looks quite tidy it's it may still be accurate we'll wait and see i'll test that before i send it home but i'm not going to attempt to do anything to it there really isn't any adjustment here anyway and if the meter reads incorrectly generally it means that the selenium cell is failing but there's our 3c all ready to go home works nicely thanks for watching